every dive has the potential to be a great adventure. I would slide into the water, into another world. Back in the 50s, there was so much marine life, you learned how to hunt. The first lady spearfishing championships, there were seven women. There was about 700 men, and I was very good at it. The attitude was take what you want and never make a difference. Just kill, kill, kill. If I never killed one shark, I wish I hadn't. From now on, I'm shooting them with my camera. Very little was known around the world about sharks in those days. You can watch it from the boat all you want, but you still haven't seen it underwater in action. We realised a shark can learn faster than you can teach a dog. Have we reason to be afraid of them? I don't think that a shark swims around saying, ha-ha, there's a human, I must swim up and eat him. They don't think like that. I decided to prove that sharks were not out to get us. Sharks are fighting to survive. They want to live, just as you or I want to live. Once I get my teeth stuck into an idea, I don't let go. It's like any animal, once you get to know it and understand it, you have a different attitude altogether. I will probably be diving when I'm in a wheelchair. Nature made the perfect animal. Here's to the sharks. See how he smiles? And so much of the footage I recognise from my youth and, and Ron and Val's sort of influence on my life. So to see it portrayed in that way was, was just wonderful. So thank you. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, it's amazing how, um, how warm I think people feel toward her. And maybe it's something about, you know, that, I mean, yes, nostalgia, you know, mm. plays a huge role, but maybe also the idea that you've forgotten about someone and then they come back, you know, like, oh, yeah, I wonder what happened to that person. But mm. um, yeah, it's really, it's it's amazing how many people do recall her. And I remember going um, through the airport for the Fiji trip that you see at the end of the film. Yep. And I mean, she hams it up completely because she insists on a wheelchair so that, you know, you move through the um, queues faster, which sure. is hilarious in itself. <laughs> but uh, every single person working at Qantas was like, oh my God, are you Valerie Taylor? And I was like, Oh my God, this woman is a mech star. It was amazing. That's it was really so eye wonderful. So, so yeah. groundbreaking sportswoman, one half of a, a great love story, reborn ocean conservationist. What was the, who was the Valerie Taylor that, that drew you to the project? What was the end point for you? You see, it's really interesting because I didn't know Valerie Taylor. I didn't know Valerie Taylor's story. Wow, okay. So, I, I mean, but of course, as soon as you do start to hear about Valerie's life, you're immediately drawn in and you want to know more. So the Valerie that I met is the one that you see on the screen, you know, this wise older woman with this extraordinary pioneering backstory mm. of um, her relationship with the ocean's most feared and awesome predators. The thing about Valerie that I suppose really drew me in, two things. I mean, I was just sort of blown away by how vibrant and um, passionate she is today. And I thought, well, you know, that's remarkable. And we never really celebrate that on screen. But actually what happened, the Fiji trip, which you see at the end of the film was in fact the very first thing that we filmed okay. as it would work out very happily so because of the pandemic shutting down all world travel but we went for other reasons it was because um the water's warmer at that time of year and she has arthritis sure. anyway um the very first day of the shoot i had come across the fiji archive and the very first day of our shoot we were on the boat heading back from the dive and there was this beautiful shot of valerie present day uh just sort of 
staring out to sea with those amazing blue eyes. And I was like, oh my God, I've seen that shot. And I went rummaging back through the archive that night because I had it on my computer. And I was like, oh, and I pulled up the archive image of her with the same expression on her face from 1960, whatever it is, and the contemporary footage. And I was like, that's the film. There's yeah. something incredible about seeing a life in a way that we experience, but we don't get to see for ourselves, which is if you're lucky to live a long and you know, purposeful life, you remember the person that you were, but you don't really, um, you don't really inhabit that vibrant, active, younger self. And so, but in film, you have this opportunity to to put those two images right next to each other. You know, the the um, action driven but less experienced character with the still very beautiful but sage, enlightened older person who has lived this you know extraordinary journey so I thought that was really interesting and became a bit of a um guiding spirit I suppose and obviously it gets represented in the film through sure. the intercuts but it was it was just that idea it became a sort of reflection on life itself you know and the the idea of it all coalescing at the end of the film the idea of life abundant you know valerie's mm. and the sharks so yeah. it's, and, and, it, and about halfway through the film i started it started to gel for me that this was not just a um you know a history lesson or a tribute piece this was a melding of who this woman has become over time and this really sort of um very, very moving for me study of of a, a lady who's got to a point in her life where um She's, yes. earned, she's earned, you know, all, all the legend that goes with her. Yeah, it, um, it, 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 there is something about the emergent woman mm. in, the, in the film, for sure. And I think it's emotional. I think it's compounded in emotion if you, uh, you know, actually, I don't know if that's true. I was going to say it's compounded if you know Valerie. I'm not sure if that's true, actually. So many people tell me mm. that they find the film incredibly moving. And I can't tell you how affirming that is, because obviously, you know, that's what you try and do when filmmaking. You try and make something that's going to shift people's hearts and minds sure. in ways that they don't expect to be so transported. But um, I think... I think there are a lot, there, there are many layers in the film. It's not just one story. So I think people read perhaps different things in those different layers. It is a love letter. It's a love letter to Valerie and Ron's relationship and their extraordinary partnership of mutual love and respect and shared activity in the marine environment. Um, but it's also a love letter to that marine environment and a lament for what we've lost. And so, you know, all of those things work on you. And personally, I find the footage of Valerie as a 14-year-old girl having just overcome polio. And there she is. She's on her roller skates. She's on horseback. <laughs> she's doing the hula. And I just, I find that just so emotional. Partly, you know, someone's, you know, recovered from a terrible um, experience. But also, I look at that image and I see myself as a 14-year-old girl with all the possibilities of the world ahead. And now as a mother, I see that image and I'm like, oh, my God, and there's my young, you know, she's 12, but, you know, daughter and all the possibilities of the world. So there's something sort of that works on you in, in a really profound way I think. I'm going to jump ahead in my questions here. I, I wanted to, as, as a father of, of two daughters, one nearly 21 and one in her mid-teens, um, yeah. to see, uh, to see a, a woman like Valerie move through the, 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 the society shifting um, somewhat in, in, in women's favour but still very much at odds with where she wanted to go in her life through the 60s and 70s and um, the determination to, to find something you love and to, to strive to do that. Um, but I would also say that I'm not, did you, I sometimes got the impression that Valerie was not, Valerie was not always aware 
of just how much of a leading figure she was in that society. Because I guess she was, she was still bikini clad and she was still in a very traditional marriage. But I think maybe only in hindsight was she, is she sort of viewed in that game changing kind of way. You're absolutely right. And I mean, we sort of joke that second wave feminism, Valerie was still under the water, do you know what I mean? <laughs> only, only, only in the sense that she was busy diving all through the 70s. Sure. But I think that what is, what I think is very inspiring about her is that she is a woman entirely on her own terms living her life on her own terms and that's actually what feminism is yeah. and I think a lot of women have told me they also find it incredibly empowering uh, when they hear in the film that she wanted to have her own special life and that choice that she she and Ron made not to have children you know is all packaged up as part of that and I think that um, it's very reductive often in the way that women are represented. You know, it's still, they're either Xena clad warrior princess and that's it. Or they are Barbie dolls and that's it. Well, as you just said, Valerie's both, yeah. you know? And um, so, uh, in fact, I was just writing... Um, the film is playing at the Newport Film Festival and there's big outdoor screening just tomorrow night. And I was just writing a little um, question and answer for the um, organizers there. And in fact, I said, you know, she's all woman in the way she is, in the way she dresses, and that's how she wants to be, you know? Um, so I think that, I think many women self-included find that really inspiring you know, just oh. live life on your own terms. Um, but uh, yeah, she, do, she, she does joke, Valerie. She says, oh, especially about the early spearfishing days. She says, oh, I just didn't even think about, you know, the fact that there were so many men. I just knew I wanted to beat them all, yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. so it's just sort of given. That sounds wonderful. And you mentioned you mentioned earlier the uh, some of the footage you had to show and the early spear fishing footage there. Um, the tail has amassed a huge amount of footage, obviously. Um, mm. and, and and to be fair, some of that footage is is hard to watch given what we know about the ocean and and sharks oh, in particular. Gruesome. So it's did terrific. you and yeah. Bettina or Valerie ever ever balk at including some some of that shark slaughter? Look, there's absolutely no question. Valerie hates seeing that footage she yeah. she she has an incredibly honest relationship with her history and does not for a second shirk the fact that she slaughtered plenty of fish and killed sharks mm. and she deeply regrets that now but I think that she also understands completely and we talked about this a lot you know, the need for people to see that trajectory. And in fact, you know, you compare Valerie with somebody, for example, like David Attenborough. And I don't say that as a name dropping. I say that I don't know anybody else on the planet who has engaged with the natural world on camera for as long as both Valerie and David Attenborough have. Absolutely, yeah. And who have themselves experienced a decline in the natural world and who obviously talk about that. Um, and she was doing that much earlier than Attenborough. And she also traveled further, I guess, than Attenborough, who you know grew up as a kind of naturalist and a you know bug collector and whatever. I mean, oh. she 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 sort of started further back. So I think that that's a really interesting um arc for anybody it's a very um accidental conservation journey in mm. some ways it was through that personal epiphany that first-hand understanding that oh maybe these sharks aren't really man eaters after all and actually we can do more by filming them and actually I know what their behavior is like it really was a personal experience of it that led to a, a an inner 
transformation and in some ways it's a very um it's a it's an authentic and um a, a place of deep conviction because she has actually had that transformation herself it's not like she's just you know learned this from some other mechanism sure so um yes we definitely had many conversations about <laughs> should we include the footage and it wasn't until actually sitting in the cinema last weekend. I mean, well, I was always adamant from the get go, not only did that footage need to be there, mm. because actually I was more, I was very concerned that if it weren't, people would watch the film and then say, oh, but did you know the Taylor's killed fish? <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. just, you know, you just, yeah. it's part of the story. So why would you not include it? Absolutely, it's shocking to watch. But you know, the, the, as is the way of these things, when you watch something for a long period of time, when you're in an edit suite, it sort of becomes part of the palette of what you're watching. You don't yeah. you forget how shocking it is. And really, truly, it wasn't until uh, last weekend, I think it was. Yeah, uh, sorry, the weekend before last, when we had our um, Q and A sessions, advanced mm. screenings in Sydney, and I was going oh my god that's so hard to watch I've forgotten you know just and the whole audience flinched and gasped you yeah, know yeah. Yeah. um as they did when she exits the cage in the middle of the Indian Ocean you know there's an absolute audible like oh yeah. she's not going into that pack of sharks you know <laughs> so I mean that was wonderful to hear all that response of course, but of course yeah so it's always hard to know what that um, that taste, if you will, line is. Um, but we felt it was really important to this story. I want to ask about you in particular in this question and, and a, a fleeting glimpse through sort of your filmography. Yep. Um, you talk about uh, Frank Geary's building, David Stratton, uh, Nolan, the man in the myth, Captain <laughs> Cook, and now, and now Valerie Taylor. There, there's a clear line that you like exploring or humanizing even sort of redefining Australian iconography is, mm. is there a blanket philosophy that pulls all these together all these projects that, that you undertake I thought you were going to make some joke about do you have an affinity for seniors what's going on <laughs> <laughs> I, I just got to rule out the next question then hang on <laughs> I think that um look I'm 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 very passionate about understanding history. I heard an amazing expression the other day in relation to a project I'm working on now, which is a, um, a, a, a Maori uh, saying, and it pertains to a lot of um, First Nations Pacific culture, which is you move into the future with your eyes to the past. Wow. And I really do believe in understanding through people's experiences and lives, something about the world in which we live today. So probably all of those films have that as, as maybe a, a current that runs through them. Mm. I am a bit of an archive nut, so that <laughs> is maybe consistent as well. And I, they're all fascinating stories, you know. Nolan is this complete outsider who's a working class Australian and winds up in the middle of London society, kind of redefining Ned Kelly, who remember was an outlaw from the army. So, you know, it's sort of like, you know, all that contradiction. Um, so, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't consciously go, oh, oh yes, I'm going to make a film about some incredibly idiosyncratic character and through which I'm going to tell some story about wider human truths although that is what seems to happen. That's exactly so what happened, yeah. I, 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 I find real life and real people far more interesting than I could ever imagine. Mm. And, um, and I always try, I mean, I'm very interested in finding the way in which that story can be accessed by someone today. You know, I really felt very passionately, I didn't want to make a quote conservation film. You know, I wanted to make a story that was about this adventurous 
first and this yeah very layered woman and this incredible kind of period of change in our oceans but through her hopefully it might trigger um you know the desire for change and awareness okay. and well, all of that speak that speaks directly to my next question um and I'll, I'll, I'll say this as I've worded I'm guessing that Valerie um, who seems quite humble to a fault, I guess, um, didn't agree to this film to retell the Valerie Taylor story. My impression was she wants her message and not just her memory to live on. Would that be fair to say? Oh, God, yes. No, she was never shy about coming forward. She uh, she kept saying, but that's not interesting. And I was like, no, I promise you it's really, I promise you that's interesting. Oh, great. And in fact, well, we, you know, we're such, we're good friends and I love her to pieces and, you know, we're catching a flight tomorrow to Byron to um, present the film up in Byron Bay and we'll have a brilliant time. And we're a bit like the three amigos on tour. It's brilliant. Um, and then, you know, that in itself is fantastic. You know, these, Three, and when I say three women, I mean Tina Dalton, the producer, Valerie and myself. And we're all actually slightly different generations and we're, you know, bonded. But um, there's one shot, <laughs> I'm laughing because I can hear Valerie as I'm saying it. Quite early on in the film, we talk about the first moment that Valerie put on a face mask. I mean, I thought this was an extraordinary moment. You know, this, that's her destiny. Yeah. you know through the through the glass and she talks about seeing kelp and and then she said you know and, and from that her her interest grew and and we have a um a beautiful montage of incredible early footage and there's an octopus and there's um uh, uh there's there's a uh there's a, a spanish the dancer in, yeah the sea line looks into a mask i think at one point yeah. yeah it's actually the montage before that it's before the very one. first one after the kelp yeah. and there's a yeah there's a spanish dancer um uh so, some a school of fish and then there's this tracking shot that follows behind this very little fish um you know just darting through <laughs> through and the shot holds right and you're quite because it's all remastered and blown up on screen yeah. you're, you're quite close you sort of feel like you're underwater <laughs> Valerie was like that is such a boring shot why have you put that in <laughs> I'm like that's one of my favorite shots uh. and then hilariously when we played the film at some point I think it was during the grade and I had the composer there with me a beautiful woman called Caitlin Yo who did an amazing job on the score and Caitlin said to me, she was sitting right next to me, and she was like, oh, I love that shot referring to that. And I was oh. like, oh, we might have to take that up with Valerie. Oh, wow. So, so to, anyway, to answer your question seriously, she absolutely will seize any opportunity to speak about marine conservation and the need to um, absolutely categorically uh, preserve in a sanctuary like space our marine environment and was very also equally happy to have a film made about her life and you know her and Ron's uh, extraordinary uh, experiences and uh, first-hand observations but I think you know the film I, I'm sure the film isn't what she thought it might be because how can anybody imagine what the film about their own life is going to be you know well, she's exactly, a filmmaker yeah. herself whose documentaries were always you know external it was about you know we're going to make a film about this particular type of shark or this new shark repeller or you know and so to sort of have that lens turned inwardly I think was you know very different um for her but she's yeah. you know she's She's, she's so thrilled, you know, she, of course there's things about the film. She's like, oh, I wish you'd put in that I'm an artist. And I was like, I did try, I did yeah. try. I'm fine. I was like, your problem Valerie is that your life is too big, you know? And there's plenty that should be in the film and just for various reasons, uh, couldn't be, you know? It's hard lots. to imagine a better film. But, You've done a um, wonderful job. And, and, and thank you so much, Sally, for, for coming on screen, watching and talking about the, um, uh, this this fantastic movie. I guess the final question, and I know everyone is waiting for me to ask it. Have you been in the water with sharks? 
I have been in the water with sharks. Good. I have to admit they were reef sharks and entirely, um, uh, you know, undramatic. <laughs> and during, when, when we did all the filming, um, the contemporary filming, yep. I did debate my um, advanced Patty is very rusty now. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, well, obviously I'm going to recertify and go down there. And actually the way that life is, I was so busy and I couldn't. And then I was like, I oh, yeah, what really? What's what's a director gonna do down there in a shiver of about 80 bull sharks, you know, and Valerie Taylor? They're not they're not really that necessary. And I did know that I needed all the footage of her pre-dive and post-dive so sure. Tina gamely went uh, down and said it was one of the most incredible experiences of her life and what's amazing is that Valerie's nephew shot all that underwater footage that you see at the end of the oh, film wow. so it's a, it's a really ongoing legacy that the Taylors are, um, are giving us. Well you've done a fantastic job as a fellow as a fellow paddy diver, I've just, got my go. open, I've just got it. That's why I was keen to see. I wanted to make sure everyone was decompressing and doing all that stuff. It's what, <laughs> it's what we us divers look for in our movies. Um, Sally, thank you so much and good luck with the film. I know it's going to be adored by audiences everywhere. And, um, and uh, thanks for joining us on Screen Watching. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Right thank you very much. Bye-bye.